Hello everybody and welcome to This Week on Twitch. My name is Zach and this is the only show on YouTube covering everything happening on the platform from news to drama. We do cover it all. This week we have to talk about TwitchCon because tickets are now available. We gotta talk about Mitch Jones being banned and Amazon purchased Bebo. So let's get right into it. The big bit of Twitch news this week is that TwitchCon tickets are now available. San Diego TwitchCon will take place September 27th to 29th and tickets range from $99 for a single day That'll be Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Or you can get a three-day pass for $169. And if you want to attend the TwitchCon party, you can pay $199. These are all U.S. dollars. Every single one of the tickets includes the sessions and meetups, the expo halls, meet and greets, swag bag, chat badge, and if you pick up your badge early, which is you pick it up on Thursday, you'll get a special exclusive gift. Event times this year range from 8 a.m. for the badge pickup, and the actual show floor time is 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, of course, Thursday is kind of a special day. If you pick up your badge between 12 and 10, that is the time that they're opened. That is also the evening of the partner shop night and the partner party. So those are exclusive events for Twitch partners that uh, the average everyday person will not be able to attend. And one final thing, if you guys want to submit a creator panel or an entertainment or a community event, the submission deadline is July 3rd. So make sure you get that in ASAP. Anyways, TwitchCon 2019, guys, who will I be seeing? Let me know in the comments below. I am definitely going. So I look forward to meeting you guys there. Next up, Twitch acquired Bebo for $25 million. And if you're wondering why they acquired Bebo, Bebo actually pivoted from being a social network back in 2005 to recently being an esports platform. So they essentially acquired it to beef up the Twitch Rivals program. Maybe we'll see Bebo branding on this platform sometime soon. Next up, Twitch hired Sarah Ios, who actually used to work at Mike and Viacom, and she's been hired by Twitch as the head of North American sales. So congratulations to you, Sarah. Best of luck in the new role. Last off in Twitch news this week, a little bit of an official, unofficial announcement, and this is from Hassan. Hassan is uh, w very well known on Twitch as one of the biggest partner managers. He tweeted out, I do not have anything to do with Twitch suspensions or moderation and actions. If you or your friend needs help in this regard, please see, and he gave us a link, I cannot do anything about suspensions or unsuspending you. So obviously a lot of people message him to try to get unbanned, and there's nothing that he can do about it. So just be aware of that. Moving on to Twitch drama this week, Mitch Jones was banned for driving while looking at Twitch chat on his phone, which is obviously a really stupid thing to do. We actually have a clip of it. I'll play it for you guys right now. Yo, thank you for the sub, dudes. Yo, listen, I will make an egg cracking emote. I swear to God, I have to do it. I fucking have to do it. Well, that escalated. He tweeted out, as many of you can see, I've been banned from Twitch for a week for looking at my phone while driving. I completely agree. I'm putting myself and others in danger and I need to be more responsible. Thanks. And then he further followed up with a video that I'll play for you guys right now addressing this situation. Uh, I'll give you guys a look. He has been banned for one week. I just wanted to address a quick topic about driving and streaming while driving. I recently got suspended for a week for uh, looking at my phone while, or sorry, reading my phone chat while I was driving, and I was completely hands-free, but I was still very distracted, and I completely deserve the suspension. And I wanted to talk more about this and tell other broadcasters that even if you're not looking at the chat or whatever, I feel like we all get carried away with, you know, text -to speech and just streaming in general where you're trying to entertain the viewers. And that creates a very distracted environment for a driver. So I just wanted to tell other broadcasters to be careful. And obviously, you know, you don't want to get in trouble on Twitch and you don't want to be a nuisance to the road and cause any accidents or God forbid, you know, anybody gets hurt. So yeah, I just wanted to lead by example and tell other broadcasters that they should probably just not stream and drive. Popular RuneScape streamer Alfie was banned for 30 days for using a homophobic slur during a heated gamer moment. And I actually have the clip and I'll play for that for you guys right now. VIP, Tempic, TV. He's only gonna call you back. Suck a dick. Oh. I didn't say I'm sorry. Fuck oh him, man. I'm sorry, man. Fuck, no. I didn't say it. I swear! 
reform streamer PLF Power returned to streaming recently and was subsequently banned just the other day. He was banned for wearing sexually suggestive attire on what he claims through a tweet. I was begging Blizzard for weeks now to give me classic beta invite, and finally tonight, I got it. And my genuine reaction was to jump around out of excitement, and my shorts slipped down a bit, and you could literally see half of my underpants, and that's about it. No arse at all. Well, we do have a clip here that uh, definitely shows part of that being true, but uh, I understand why he's banned. We'll see whether or not he is permanently banned, or if this is just a temporary one. Ah, there you go. I... No way, dude! No way, dude! Italian Rainbow Six player Sloppy got banned this week. He tweeted out, Hi guys, as some of you already know, I got a temporary ban on Twitch. I'm chill with myself because I know I didn't do anything against Twitch rules. And I hear that many Italian streamers got my same problem. And in the end, it was an issue on Twitch. And then in a response to somebody, he also said, Apparently it's a bug in the algorithm. News soon. So we'll have to see how long he's actually going to be banned for and whether or not this is actually a bug that Twitch has with an algorithm or if there's actually a reason for his ban. German partnered streamer Yoons was suspended this week for 30 days for engaging in hateful conduct against a person or group of people. And we don't have a clip of it, but we do have what he tweeted out. And he actually said, to give context, I downed someone in the game Dead by Daylight and compared them to a cigarette butt after hitting a two long range hatchets on them before they could make it to the gate, compared tossing on the hook to tossing a cigarette butt aside. Obviously, uh, what we're talking about here is the homophobic slur, but he then tweeted out, people aren't seeing it because it was in my convo with the person who was proud to report me. I'm sorry for what I said. I fudged up. I said something that I shouldn't have said, and I'm sorry to all those that felt hurt due to it. So he's been suspended for 30 days. We will see him in July. Affiliate streamer Whole Wheat Pete has 12,000 followers, and he got suspended this week indefinitely for creating or sharing content featuring nudity. Side note, Twitch, that's not how you spell nudity. He got banned because his camera had shifted slightly and on his screen there was a minion with a penis and showed that on stream. And that was the sexual content that he displayed on stream. Typically when you get those first time indefinite suspensions it's 30 days, so perhaps we'll see him in July. But otherwise he may be gone for what is probably the worst reason of 2019. Partnered streamer Anthony Z has 163,000 followers and he was almost banned for 24 hours for a DMCA complaint for playing music on his stream. He tweeted out in a series of uh, tweets saying, and I'll show them to you guys on screen, uh, never playing copyrighted music on stream again, just got a DMCA claim, maybe getting a 24 hour ban as well for this, copyright music strike thing, but not too sure. I'll keep you updated dudes. Next one he says, all I'm saying is if you're playing music on stream a lot, you should definitely chill on it. And especially if it's a little oozy. And then he kind of followed up where his, uh, his tone changed a little bit. So I got news that anything music related on my stream that is not game music must be deleted. So I'll be spending all night deleting VODs and clips and I'll be downloading them as well to keep. I'm sorry this is happening, but I love streaming so I don't want to risk it. And then one final update where he said, actually pretty upset. I need to delete all the VODs and basically every clip. Cleaning out my channel is so hard because there's so many memories. Here is a warning to streamers. And I have made this warning in the past, but I do believe that music on this platform is going to be an issue in the very near future. Now, this may have been an accident. I don't know if Lil Uzi is responsible or, or his people behind this have asked for his music to be taken off the platform. But if you do play copyrighted music on this platform, it may be time to start reconsidering or at least thinking about the future 
and what you're going to be doing for music. And our last bit of Twitch drama this week is actually Twitch making amends for a mistake that they made where they banned Prof Dog, who is an affiliate on the platform with just about 7,000 followers. He had been banned falsely for something that he didn't actually do. And Twitch's apology essentially uh, uh, gave his subscribers a little bit of a perk. Anybody who resubbed to his channel within the first one to two days after his ban actually got their subscription for free. And then anybody who missed out on that kind of initial promotion uh, got 500 bits instead. So kind of a cool thing that Twitch is doing if they've made a mistake and banned somebody incorrectly for anybody who resubs. Our new partner this week is Doug Doug W. This guy is incredibly entertaining. He does all kinds of strange random challenges like having a spoon on your nose or closing and opening your eyes every five seconds. Guys, make sure you go check him out. Here's a couple of his clips. I will complete 100 gaming challenges to impress Ikea and get a sponsorship for a free table! Ikea and Doug Doug. Ikea is the ultimate furniture store. Doug is the ultimate gamer. It's time for Ikea to sponsor Doug. This only happened because we believed in spoons. Despite everybody else saying that forks were a great utensil, we knew that spoons were the way to go. And we believed and we fought, and we started doing gaming challenges. Even when they said, you can't beat Mario with voice, you can't beat GTA with voice, we did it anyways because we believed in spoons. And through weeks and weeks of effort, we finally achieved partner program with our voice. And it was amazing! And now we're invincible! We have unlimited power! Twitch partner! And our featured affiliate this week is I Am B Pala. Guys, make sure you go check him out. Here's a couple of his clips. Wait. <laughs> I oh, caught it. Oh. oh my God, she's just so amazing. All right, I, I, I have to use the bathroom. I have to use the bathroom. Wait. Oh my. Do you see what I did? <laughs> I fucking bow tied my goddamn headset to myself. Band Fallout Boy. Email. Let's go. Ah! Ah! Oh God! Holy shit! What the fuck? Oh my God! And with that, guys, I want to thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy, please click like and subscribe, and come on over and check me out on twitchtv slash Bussy. I am live on weekdays at five o'clock Eastern. And with that, guys, have a great day. I'll leave you with fail of the week. Bye bye. Bro, stop playing with me. Oh, somebody just subbed. Oh my God! <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> told you, you good. Oh my god. Yo, man. Oh, that, bitch, that bitch is bad. Oh my god. <laughs>